everyone! This is a video tutorial to help you understand how an E2 reaction has to happen with a cyclohexane. So the first thing you have to understand is when we have an E2 reaction, because it's concerted, you have to have a particular orientation for the H group that's leaving and for the halogen group that's leaving. When we're talking about a cyclohexane, they have to be axially positioned to one another. So you have to have the X and the beta H that's leaving both be in the axial positions. If that is the case, then you will see an E2 reaction with a cyclohexane. Let's take a look at a few examples. Okay, let's take a look at our first example. So over here we have a cyclohexane. The first thing we need to do when talking about an E2 reaction is verify that the halogen is axially located. So over here our bromine is located in that axial position. The next thing we do is look at the beta carbons. So in this case we have two betas, one right here and one over here. Now in both cases the beta carbons have an axial H. So the next thing we'll do is look at regioselectivity. Because this here is a more stable alkene that would form, we know that this is the hydrogen that we're going to use in the reaction. So my base comes, pulls off the hydrogen, the electrons in this bond fall and form the double bond that we see in the product over here, and the bromine group gets kicked off. So remember, in this case here, we were looking first that it was an E2 reaction, we were verifying that the halogen was located axially, and then we look at the beta carbons and see which of the beta carbons has an axially located H. If in this case they both do, we're looking at regioselectivity. Which one would form our more stable alkene at the very end? Let's take a look at another example. Okay, so let's take a look at our next example. So you may take a look at the cyclohexane and think it's exactly the same one, but there's actually one key difference. So in this case here, we still have our bromine located axially, and we still have two beta carbons. The big difference lies in the fact that now on this beta carbon, the hydrogen is not positioned axially. It's positioned equatorially, which means we cannot use this hydrogen when doing the E2 reaction. That means then that our major product will be based off of the reaction with this hydrogen on this beta carbon, because this hydrogen is positioned in the necessary axial location. So our base will come pull off this hydrogen, that bond there will then collapse into the double bond that we have, and the bromine group will get kicked off. So remember, in this case here, once again, you're making sure that your halogen is located axially, and you're verifying which of your beta carbons actually has the hydrogen located in an axial position. Let's take a look at one more example. Okay, so now in this example here, we want to just figure out, can the chair react? So if you were given this chair to start out with, remember the first thing you're going to do is look to see where the halogen is positioned. So in this case, our bromine is located equatorially. That doesn't mean you automatically say that this will not react, because this chair can have a chair flip occur. And when the chair flip occurs, our bromine is now located in an axial position. So now because it's axially located, and we do have a beta carbon with an axial hydrogen, we can say that yes, this chair will react when it is in this particular conformation. So that is something you have to look at before you decide automatically no. Check to see if there's a chair flip possible, and if there's a chair flip possible, see if when that chair flip happens, you'll have everything put in the correct orientation. If so, then yes, the reaction will happen.